We have reached the beginning of another new month, so that of course means the obligatory wrap-up video that everyone is posting, I, which I decided to join in on the fun so I could tell you guys what I read in March. So stay tuned to see what those things are. Hello everyone, it is Samantha and I hope you guys are having a great day today. I am very excited about today's video because it is my monthly wrap up for March. I read an astounding 11 things, which so far this year is my best reading month yet. And it was a pretty good mix of things I really liked, some things I really didn't like, but you know, that's how you appreciate the good things in life. You know, if we didn't have those books we hated, we wouldn't appreciate the ones we love as much. As always, I like to start out my wrap-ups with some statistics for my reading months. So, you know, break it down numbers and graphs because as an accountant, I like numbers and I like graphs. So in March, I ended up reading a total of 11 things. Five of them were graphic novels and the rest were novels. I read a total of 2,979 pages, which averages to about 96 pages a day. In terms of genre breakdown, I read 45% graphic novels, 36% were fantasy, 9% was classics, and 9% was YA. So in terms of book type, which is the format of the book itself, 45% were graphic novels, 27% were hardcover, 18% was trade paperback, and 9% were audiobooks. In terms of years published, the vast majority of the books that I read were published between 2010 and 2016, a couple of outliers, one being from 1999 and one being from 1908. In terms of book length, the majority of the books that I read were split evenly between 4 and 500 pages and 100 and 199 pages, those graphic novels. And then I read, of course, read two books that were between 200 and 300 pages and 300 and 400 pages. The vast majority of the authors that I read this month came from the United States, with Canada and the UK taking a close second. And finally, in terms of star rating, I had a pretty good split with three of my my books being five stars. One was four and a half stars, four books were four stars, and three were two stars. So that is enough for the statistics and numbers and graphs and things. Let us now get into the books themselves and what I thought of them. So the first book that I read this month was Walk on Earth a Stranger by Ray Carson. Ray Carson, of course, is the author of the Girl of Fire and Thorns trilogy, of which I still need to finish. I still haven't read the last two. Yep, add that one to the list of things I need to do. Walk on Earth a Stranger follows our main character of Lee Westfall. Lee was born during the time of the gold rush in the United States, and she has a very special ability in that she can sense gold around her. So it doesn't matter where it is or how deep it is, she can tell where gold is. And this is a gift that her and her family, her parents have kept secret because of course bad things can happen if people find out she has this gift during the gold rush. And Lee lives on a farm in the south with her parents. They live have humble means and they kind of are able to sustain themselves on her ability to find gold and, you know, just working the farm. And so one day disaster strikes and Lee arrives home to discover that her parents have been murdered and the killer is a little bit closer to home than she once thought. So Lee ends up taking her life into her own hands and fleeing to California to join all the people going towards the gold rush, all the gold that has been discovered in California. So this kind of shows her journey to get to California, the trials that she has to go through in order to get there, and I really ended up enjoying this story. Ray Carson does a really good job of creating strong characters, and I really, really loved a lot of the characters in this book. They all have very individual and distinct personalities, which I really enjoyed. Some of the things I didn't much like were the dialogue. I felt like the dialogue was a little bit weak, and it felt a little contrived, I guess I would say. Like, it didn't feel natural. The conversations that these characters have, the way that they talk, their diction, just did not feel very natural to me. It didn't flow. So that was probably my biggest pet peeve with this book was the way that the characters spoke themselves. But I really enjoyed the plot, and I always enjoy Ray Carson's writing. It's just a fun book. In terms of how I broke down the star rating, I gave the characters four stars. I gave the world building or the setting of the story four stars. I gave the plot four stars, the writing four stars, and overall I gave the book itself four stars. So it was just a good straight four star book which for me is like you know a pretty good book above average. I enjoyed it and I'm definitely looking forward to the sequel that's coming out this year. The next book that I read was a graphic novel and that was Chew Volume 9, Chicken Tenders. I love the Chew graphic novel series. I don't want to get too much into what the plot was about because it will give away a lot because it is one of the last volumes that are out. I think volume 11 comes out this year at some point, which I'm looking forward to because I need to know what's going to happen. I really, really enjoyed this one. I think this one is probably my favorite in the series so far because Pollo is an awesome badass chicken. And if you read the true graphic novel series, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Also, this one had a Walking Dead reference in it, which I thought was funny because we were watching The Walking Dead while I was reading this. And then I saw this 
I'll try and put up a little screenshot right here because it was from one of the comic cons they put this in a Poyo helping the people from The Walking Dead which I thought was great and I thought it was hilarious. So I'm not really the biggest Walking Dead fan but my family is and so they were watching it and I'm like hey look this is like you know Carl and them and that just made me laugh. So I really enjoyed that. All for this volume, volume 9, I gave the characters 5 stars. I love these true characters. I gave the art style 4.5 stars. I gave the plot 5 stars and overall I gave this volume a 5 stars. The next graphic novel that I picked up was True Volume 10. This one is blood pudding and of course I, I need I need volume 11 I need to know what's going to happen I didn't like this one as much as the last one but it was still very enjoyable so for this one the rating breakdown is as follows I gave the characters five stars our style four and a half stars and the plot three and a half stars for an overall rating of four stars I didn't enjoy it as much as some of the others in the series but I can definitely not wait for the next volume I need it in my life now the next book that I picked up this month was part of the booktube SFF awards shortlist and that was in the novel category and that is a darker shade of magic by V.E. Schwab this was a very very interesting fantasy novel that I absolutely love. I can see why it was so popular last year and why so many people enjoyed it. It follows our main character of Kel who is a magician and has the ability to travel between worlds. And this does take place in our world but it takes place in London and it's just one of several Londons. So Kel has the ability to travel between all of the different alternate worlds and the different Londons. He can travel between his own red London to white London and gray London and of course there is a mysterious black London which has become absorbed by the magic in this universe and has kind of been closed off by everyone else because it was leaking into the other worlds and causing harm. Not only is Kel able to be the court magician, he's also the adopted son of the king and queen, but he also kind of dabbles in the black market and he ends up bringing home a piece of black London that he shouldn't have. And this piece ends up causing havoc in all of the worlds. And Kel has to kind of strive against it, protect his own London and protect the rest of the other Londons and these alternate realities from succumbing to what happened to Black London. And it was just really enjoyable. I absolutely loved it. I thought the story was a lot of fun. I like this idea of world hopping between alternate realities. And I just thought it was a really, really interesting concept, not something you see a lot. I also like alternate history, so I really enjoyed that aspect of it as well, and how each London had their own individual characteristics and qualities. The people were very different, and I really, really thought that was pretty ingenious. Uh, overall, I thought the characters were probably my least favorite thing about the book. Some of them felt a little bit underdeveloped. Kel was probably the most developed and even then at times his motivations felt a little bit weak to me. And Delilah who is the other main protagonist in this story that he ends up meeting in Grey London I believed I found to be a bit annoying at times. She really grew on me towards the end of the book but the beginning half I found her character to be quite annoying. I don't really know what it was about her. I think it was just her attitude and her personality just kind of got on my nerves after a while. So the characters are probably my least favorite thing about the story, but I love the story itself and it was just fantastic. So my overall rating breakdown for this story is as follows. I give the characters three and a half stars, the world building four stars, the writing four stars, and the plot three and a half stars for an overall rating of four stars. The next book that I read in March was my audiobook for the month, and that was Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. If you guys have read Fangirl, then you will know that Carry on is from the fangirl book. In fangirl there is this story that's kind of reminiscent of Harry Potter that is called Simon Snow and the main character writes fan fiction. So Carry On is supposed to be that main character from fangirl's fan fiction story. So it follows our main character of Simon Snow and he's supposed to be the chosen one and it's like a wizarding world and he goes to the school and then there's this angsty love story between him and Baz and I really didn't like it guys. I really really tried. I think the only reason I finished it was because I was listening to the audiobook and the narrator for the story was really, really good. But I really did not like the story. I didn't like any of the characters. I thought that they were all really annoying. I found Simon Snow's character to be very whiny. I did like Baz. Baz was probably one of my favorite characters. But their relationship I found to be kind of problematic. There are these two people that hate each other, that have done a lot of cruel mean things to each other and now they're like hey we love each other. I just did not like it at all and they did not convince me in any way that they had feelings for each other. Like it was just suddenly happened. It's like oh hi guess what I like you but I'm still gonna treat you like an ass because that just did not work for me at all. So plot was a little meh. I didn't really feel invested in anybody's motivations and it just was not the story for me. 
I think. I know a lot of people like it, and I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it. Just me personally, it was not the story for me, so I just was not the biggest fan of it. So overall, my rating breakdown for this story is as follows. I gave the characters two stars. I gave the world building two stars. I gave the writing style three stars, and I gave the plot development two stars for an overall rating of two stars. So and again, it was not the story for me. If you guys liked it, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. I can see how people would like it. I just think it was just not the story for me. <laughs> the next book that I picked up made up for Carry On and that was Dancer's Lament by Ian C. Esselmont. I did receive this from Penguin in exchange for a free and honest review so I will be having a video review of this coming up soon. I just haven't filmed it yet because life has been a little bit crazy lately. I did read this last month with Michael from Bitten by a Radioactive Book and I enjoyed it. So backstory time. This story takes place in the Malletson world. If you guys may or may not know the Malletson Book of the Fallen is a very large fantasy series that was written by Steven Erickson it's still being written. He's still writing books for it. Stephen Erickson and Ian C. Esselmont co-created the world that these stories take place in. Really, really enjoyable. Ian C. Esselmont's this new series by him takes place hundreds of years before the events in the Gardens of the Moon, which is the first book in the Molotov series. So it follows a lot of the things that are referenced in the Gardens of the Moon series and a lot of the characters. So this gives a backstory to Shadow Throne and Cotillion, the Rope, which was really, really exciting. And I haven't finished the Molotov Book of the Fallen series, so it was nice reading this with Michael because he was able to fill in a lot of the gaps in my knowledge which was very nice so that was a lot of fun. So this follows our main character of Doran who of course is Cotillion and when he was a young lad and he ends up traveling to the city of Quantali where he is trying to set himself up as an assassin. He's a very skilled assassin and he ends up encountering trouble not only from the other people who kind of live in the under city but also the fact that this city ends up becoming besieged and part of a war and in addition to this his fate is kind of tangled up in this Don Ho Mage, who of course becomes Shadow Throne, and their fates become intertwined. And he is very frustrated with this Don Ho Mage because he keeps foiling his plans, and this Don Ho Mage kind of has a sense of humor, and he's kind of quirky and weird, and just kind of upsetting everything that Doran is trying to do. And it's a very exciting book. It has assassin -y elements, which isn't a word, but it's a word now. And some battle scenes, and it follows many different character perspectives, and just the way. I just really, really love the way that Ian C. Esselmont writes. It's very lyrical, almost, and enjoyable, and it has a lot of humor, but also a lot of really, like, heart-wrenching, sad moments, and I just really, really, really enjoyed the story a lot, and it's great to get the backstory on these two characters, and it's just a lot of fun. The world that they have created is very ex expansive, and it's just amazing, all of the imagination that went into this story. So I really, really enjoyed this one. I cannot wait for the rest of the books in the series, and I need to finish reading the Molotov books because... It's just a really fun world. So overall, my rating breakdown for the story is as follows. I gave the characters five stars, the world building five stars, the writing four stars, the plot four and a half stars for an overall rating of five stars. And I just really enjoy it. And I recommend it if you're a lover of fantasy to definitely check out Ian C. Esmond's and Stevian Erickson's books because they're definitely a must for any fantasy lover. The next book that I picked up in March was an old favorite of mine and that is Anna Green Gables by Ella Montgomery. I think everybody kind of knows of the Anna Green Gables series even if you haven't read it. It was one of my favorites from my childhood. I've been wanting to reread the whole series this year, so I, of course I had to pick up Anna Green Gables. In case you're not familiar with the story, it follows the young orphan of Anne who is adopted by a brother and sister in Prince Edward Island. They were expecting a boy, but they got a girl, and they end up keeping Anne who is this imaginative and lovely little creature, and I just absolutely love this story. Anne is such a, a wonderful character that makes you feel so happy and like filled with joy. There's a lot of really, really great moments in this story. All of the characters are wonderful, and it's just as good as I remember it, so I I had a lot of fun rereading this one and I need to pick up Anne of Avonlea ASAP because I need more Anne in my life. So the rating breakdown for the story is as follows. I gave the characters five stars, the setting five stars, I gave the writing four and a half stars, and the plot four and a half stars for an overall rating of five stars. Definitely an old favorite and that hasn't changed. I still love this book just as much as I always have. The next two things I picked up were graphic novels and they were also for the shortlist for the Book to Best SFF Awards and that is The Wicked and the Divine, the Volume 1, The Faust Act, and Volume 2, Fandom Demonium by Gillian McCleave and Wilson Cowles. I, I think I'm in the minority for these two. I was not a fan. I was not a fan of these two graphic novels whatsoever. They follow this cast of characters that are gods. These gods have been sent to live amongst people on earth but after I think what, four years they have to live and then they die. These gods are supposed to come down and kind of inspire humanity, so they take on these roles of like pop figures basically. And our main character is obsessed with them and she'll do anything to help them. And I 
just just completely fell flat for me. I can see why people would like it. I just did not at all. I did not. I was mystified as to why the main character was acting the way she was. Like I did not believe in her motivations whatsoever for why she was sacrificing so much for these gods, these pop figures who happened to also be gods. And I just I don't know. I was mystified the entire time. I didn't, it I felt very confusing to me the way that the story was told. So that was one thing I didn't much care for. I didn't really understand any of the characters. Their motivations were just confusing to me. I did not believe in them. I was not convinced by their actions. And I just overall was not impressed with it. The art, however, is amazing. The art was my favorite thing about this story. Like, I'll try to find a, an example. I think the art was just phenomenal, and it looks gorgeous. The art is very, very cool. Like, it's, it's very cool art. That was the thing I loved about the most about these two graphic novels, but everything else I was not a fan of. Overall, my rating breakdown is as follows. And the rating is, is the same for both of these. I gave the characters one star. I gave the plot one and a half stars. I gave the art style four stars for an overall rating of two stars so I will probably not be picking up the other volumes in this series I mean volume two did end on a bit of a cliffhanger but I'm okay never knowing yep <laughs> the next graphic novel and the last one I picked up in the month of March was another booktube SFF awards shortlist item and that is Nimona by Noelle Stevenson Contrast with Wicked and Divine, I actually really, really like this one. It follows our main character from Nimona, who is a shape-shifting creature, and she ends up joining forces and becoming the sidekick to the evil Lord Blackheart, who isn't quite as evil as he seems. And together, they kind of tried to wreak havoc on this world, and I really enjoyed it. It had a very sad ending, and I'm hoping that there will be more volumes in this series because I kind of want to know what's going to happen. I feel like things weren't completely tied up, but I really, really enjoyed it. I found it to be a lot of fun. I thought the humor was on point. Our style was kind of fun and quirky, and it was a lot better than the Lumberjanes, which I did not like, but I really, really, really liked this one. I thought it was a lot of fun. I like how they combined fantasy and sci-fi elements into one. I thought that they did it pretty well, so I really, really enjoyed it. And my rating breakdown for this one is as follows. I gave the characters four and a half stars. I gave the art style four stars the plot four stars for an overall rating of four stars and the last book that I picked up in the month of March was a Jack of Ken Rowan by Charles Day Lynch I really 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 love this book it was a lot of fun Charles Day Lynch writes urban fantasy that involves Faye and kind of takes place in Canada and this one takes place in Ottawa and it follows our main character of Jackie and Jackie kind of ends up getting tangled up in the events with the seely and unseely courts of the Fae and she becomes their Jack so it's kind of like a Jack and the giant killer retelling because the jacks are known for killing the giants and she kind of ends up helping them in their ongoing war that is going on the unsteely court is taking over and destroying all the good fae and i really 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 love this story it was a lot of fun and i was very engrossed in it i love the way the characters talked i love the main characters themselves they're very strong and like kind of kick ass and i just really really enjoyed it so much it's told in two parts so the first part deals more with jackie and her friend and their events and getting tangled up in the silly and unsilly courts and then the second half also has Jackie and her friends in it, but it also focuses on another character that's introduced and a new villain, and I just thought that was pretty fun too. So I really, really enjoyed the story. It was the first time reading Charles Day Lynch. My friend Jesse gave me this gave me this book for my birthday, and I'm glad he did because it is definitely a fun book, and I think I've definitely found a new favorite author. I love his writing style. It is really, really good. So overall, my rating breakdown for this story is as follows. I gave the characters five stars. I gave the setting of the story four stars. I gave the writing four and a half stars. And I gave the plot five stars for an overall final rating of four and a half out of five stars. So if you haven't checked out Charles D. Lynch, but you're wanting to read more fae stories and more urban fantasy, then I suggest checking him out because he's a pretty great author, fun, quick reads, and I definitely want to check out more from him myself. All right, guys, that is it for my March wrap up. Kind of a long video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and seeing what I read in the month of March. Also let me know if you read any of these and what your thoughts were on them and if what your favorite read was from the month of March because I'd be curious to know that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great month and until my next video, happy reading. Bye! As always, I like to start out my monthly wrap-ups with some statistics. Breakdown. Yeah, I cannot talk.